What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster for Nintendo Switch. Now, as many of you know by now, I consider myself one of the biggest Final Fantasy fanboys in the universe. I've managed to find, track down, and beat every single game in the entire series, some of them even multiple times. But this game specifically, it's something that holds a very, very large place in my heart, mostly because, in my opinion, Final Fantasy X is easily one of the best games to start with. If you're trying to get invested in this very long-running franchise and you don't know where to just basically begin, this one is such a good choice. It's got great voice acting, it's got fantastic graphics, and it's got a story that is just so chock full of layers of meaning that even trying to dissect it could take us hours. So what I want to do in this video is actually sort of highlight what makes the remaster so spectacular and basically see how this works on Switch. Because I know a lot of people are going to be actually picking this up for the first time ever. So I'm going to do my best to avoid every single spoiler and instead just focus on this spectacular version of it. So the Final Fantasy X and X2 HD remaster is basically a remix of the classic games. So a lot of people don't know this, but back in the day when these games were originally coming out, we'd actually get separate versions of them. So basically, at first it'd come out in Japan, then it'd be released in America, and then back in Japan, they would typically do a second release, and one that would actually have added content. Sometimes extra quests, extra bosses, or sometimes even extra story that is very, very interesting. So for the HD remaster, they decided to actually combine all of this. Everything is put into English and actually here for the first time, and it is spectacular, because really the story in Final Fantasy X is miraculous. I mean, it will literally make you cry, and I feel like this is a little bit of a controversial statement, but X2 does not deserve all the hate. Okay, yes, it's cheesy, and people are super over the top when they're changing costumes, but the battles are great and the plotline itself really manages to expand this universe in some really fascinating and, in my opinion, brave ways. These games are both very, very good, easily some 10 out of 10 masterpieces. But what's really cool about this collection is that they've tried to do some stuff to really update it, because, let's face facts, these came out super long ago. At this point, you need to do just at least a little bit of revisions to try and make them still a very, very modern. So throughout these, there's actually things like they updated the sphere grid if you choose to do it. It basically makes it where everything is a lot, lot harder. Or if you want, there are now extra super bosses that are hidden throughout certain sections of the game that are about a million times harder than any other enemy in the entire game. It's basically extra stuff to keep you interested. And since you guys are playing through this for the first time, you also have the option of listening to the newly arranged music. Basically, they decided to go in and get every Every track that was originally just basically recorded with keyboards and stuff and redo them in full orchestra. Now, some true fans actually appreciate the original songs more, and I think that they're both unique. Everything in this is so spectacular, but I want to say these are not perfect. Uh, I think one of the weird things that I noticed this time going back through them again on the Nintendo Switch is the fact that, so like the voice acting, so everybody in this game does a very, very good job at trying to convey the really deep personal tales going on within these two games, but I think that there's something a little bit weird about the fact that in 10.1 specifically, there's a little bit of a problem where people's mouths just do not line up at all. It kind of looks a little bit weird, whereas everybody in 10.2, they manage to move their lips a lot, lot better. It looks better, and I definitely think it helps some of the more emotional moments land. I also still wish that they managed to do just a tiny bit more with the handheld version of this. So basically, this is probably one of the main reasons people are going to be purchasing this is so that you can play it anywhere, anytime, and really get the full experience of these fantastic games. But something they decided to include in this is limited touch functionality. Now, in general, as you can see, just playing it handheld, the graphics are great. It actually comes through very, very cleanly on the screen. But if you want, you're actually able to tap the left side of it and instantly pull up a quick healing menu. So basically, instead of actually opening up your menus every single time you want to 
try and heal yourself between battles, you can now just say, heal myself with potions or heal myself with magic. It's a nice little thing to basically just streamline the experience. But I do wish that they managed to reprogram the menus to be touchscreen. I don't know, it's just a personal gripe, but whenever I'm getting stuff on Switch, I want to try and use all of the power of the Switch, all of its capabilities, all of its unique freaking features. And I consider the fact that it has a touchscreen something that would be neat to actually use. It's not really a complaint, it's just something that I hoped would be in there, but of course isn't. In general, I think that both of these games are super, super good and easily worth the price. So in America, this costs $50, and really, I can easily say that paying $25 for each of these masterpieces is a steal of a deal. I mean, just getting to see these games again in their full beautiful color glory and seeing the fact that they managed to do so many tiny changes like updating the menus to be a lot more clear so when you're actually choosing attacks and battles and stuff, everything is much more vibrant and easy to pick out. This is a good game. I mean, both of these managed to be spectacular and having them come to the Switch makes it an easy choice of whether or not you should get it. I think that this is definitely something that should be directed more towards new fans though. If you're somebody who's wanting a good story and something that's going to feel a little bit different than modern RPGs, this is a fantastic place to go. I know I've spoken to a lot of fans who have actually said that they're not able to get into Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasy 9 because the graphics to them are just so out of date. But this, in my opinion, is easily the greatest starting Final Fantasy. So really, if you've never tried the franchise and you're open-minded, give this one a shot. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Final Fantasy X and X-2 on the Nintendo Switch a 9.5 out of 10. At the very end of this video, after I'm done talking here for a second, you're actually going to see some links. I'm actually going to link you out to my reviews of Final Fantasy VII on Switch and Final Fantasy IX on Switch. Because if you're somebody who ends up stumbling upon this video and you go, wow, this game was fantastic, what should I play next? I want you to check those out because seriously, this entire franchise is stupendous. But you need to try and figure out which games you think will be the best fit for you next. Thanks for giving this series a shot. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, these games are everything to me, so the fact that new people are stumbling upon them really brings me so much joy. But uh, really, I just want to say thanks so much for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming! Next up is Final Fantasy XII, and oh boy am I excited! Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.